everybody, uh, it's Gabby, and today we're going to be reading The Sun is Kind of a Big Deal, because uh, Sunday is National STEM slash STEAM Day, so we're going to be doing some kind of sciencey things today, so that's going to be super fun. Um, our videos are going to look a bit different because we got like a tripod with a ring light so that's why I'm like actually standing up instead of sitting down um so the lighting's better and everything so yeah I'm pretty excited to film it with my new tripod um and yeah this book today it's kind of long book but it goes over all the planets and the solar system it's gonna be super fun so yeah let's get started started oh yeah woohoo the sun is kind of a big deal all of the planets and the sun live together in the solar system like a big family the sun is our solar system's very own star seriously the sun is an actual star it's the only star in our solar system, and it sits right in the center, holding everything together. Could I have your autograph? It's for, um, my moon, C Castillo. I don't think I pronounced that right. So, what's in the solar system besides the sun and the planets? Dwarf planets. There are five rocky bodies that are smaller than actual than the regular planets. Asteroids. Small, rocky objects that move around between Mars and Jupiter in the asteroid belt. Meteors. Streaks of light created when pieces of space rock or metal speed into Earth's atmosphere. If you see a shooting star, it's actually a meteor. I don't know if you hear, hear this in the rest of the video, but it's raining and I'm super excited about that. Um... But I don't know if you'll hear that in the background, and if you don't, then that's fine. I can just cut it out, but... Comets. Icy rocks that shoot through space and leave a trail of gas and dust. Aliens. Okay, maybe not, but we're always looking for them. Here's an... Oh, hey, guess what? Our solar system is just one of many solar systems that exist. A galaxy is a group made of billions of solar systems. Our galaxy is called the Milky Way. There are billions of galaxies out there, and together, they make up the universe. Can you count to a billion? I know I can't. The sun is the biggest thing in the solar system. It's even bigger than the Earth. Way bigger. Way, way bigger. Like, over a million times bigger. Ow, this burns. This is why I keep my distance. There are much bigger bigger stars than the sun, but all of the other stars you see are really, 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 really far away. Really? Really. The other stars are in totally different solar systems and have their own planets. Earth is the third planet away from the sun. Remember Earth? That's the little planet where you and everyone you know lives. Mercury says, I'm the baby. Venus says, I'm the hottest planet. Earth says, I have cats. Mars, did someone lose a rover? Jupiter, I'm gassy. Saturn, hula hoop champion. Uranus, I spin sideways. Neptune, it's c -c cold out here. Pluto, I'm still here, guys. Pluto used to be a planet, but scientists decided it didn't quite fit in the definition. Now it's called a dwarf planet. Sorry, Pluto. The planets move around the sun like a big racetrack in space. Each planet has its own special path that it follows. That's called an orbit. Some planets are faster than the others, but each one stays in its lane. I really feel like I have to go further than you guys. Happy New Year! It takes a whole year for the Earth to go all the way around the sun. How, how many, how do you know how, oh my god, do you know how many times you've been around the sun? And how old are you? So what does the moon do all year long? 
while Earth is going around the sun, the moon is spinning around the Earth. The moon goes around the Earth 12 or 13 times one year. That's about once a month. Depending on where the moon is in its cycle, we might only see part of it. The rest of the moon is in its shadow. When we see the whole thing, it's called a full moon. And these are the phases of the moon. And the moon spins around the Earth. The sun never stops working. It does a ton of important jobs for Earth. In fact, we wouldn't be around without the sun. Are you sure you need all of us for me? Yes, every second of every day. Please and thank you. Why is Earth so important? Two words, plants and animals. That's three words. Still waiting on that autograph. What is this line for? The sun gives us light so we can see, but it takes about eight minutes for the light to get to us because the sun is so far away, but it's worth the wait. Earth spins around in a full circle every day. Hi again, how was your night? That is when... That is why when it's nighttime for you, it's daytime on the other side of the world. Oh, hey, guess what? As one side of the earth spins away from the sun, it looks like the sun's getting the sun is setting there and it becomes night. As that side of the earth spins back towards the sun, it looks like the sun is rising. And you guessed it, breakfast time. The sun is always there, even when you can't see it. Sometimes it looks dark outside during the day because the sun is, okay, sometimes it looks dark outside during the day because the sun is behind the clouds, but it's still there. Hey, move it clouds, I was trying to make shadow puppets. Once in a while, it gets dark in the daytime because the moon gets in the sun's way. This is called a solar eclipse and it only lasts for a little while. Look what I can do. Yes, yes, we are very impressed. Now keep moving. Keeping us warm is another really imp important part of the sun's job. The sun is hotter than you can imagine, way hotter than fire. Its temperature reaches millions of degrees at the center. Some places on Earth are warmer than others. The parts of Earth closest to the equator are the warmest. The parts of Earth closest to the North and South Poles are the co coldest. And there's a little diagram. Oh, hey, guess what? See that red line around the middle of Earth? It's an imaginary line people inverted, invented, not inverted, called the equator. It separates the top and bottom halves of the Earth. So now we know it's colder near the poles of the Earth and warmer near the equator. But why? Well, the parts of Earth near the equator are getting the sun's heat from straight on. The north and south poles are getting the same amount of sunlight, but it gets spread out over a bigger area. Since these places have to share the sun's heat, they don't get quite as warm. There's the north pole, the south pole, and the equator. While Earth is moving around the sun, it is spinning on a tilt. That is why we have seasons. There are four seasons, spring, summer, fall, and winter. Because of the Earth's tilt, the top half of the bot and the bottom half of the world experience the seasons at different times. When the bottom half of Earth is tilted towards the sun, it is summer there. This also means that when the top half of the Earth is tilted away from the sun, which makes it winter there. The sun's work isn't done yet. Every day, the sun also has an important job in the water cycle. Condensation, precipitation, and evaporation. What happens during the water cycle? Heat from the sun causes water to mix with air, turning into vapor. That's called evaporation. Then the vapor gathers together to make clouds. That's called condensation. Finally, the water comes back down as rain or snow. That's called precipitation. Actually, it was precipitating uh, five minutes ago. Or raining, you know, whatever. <laughs> The water cycle is important for all living things, but especially for plants. Plants need water and sunlight for photosynthesis. That's a super big word, but it's also a really big job. What can I do for you today? A little pho photosynthesis, please. I like totally love dirt. Dirt is awesome. I love it. What do I owe you? Oxygen. 
Photosynthesis is when a plant uses light from the sun, water from the water cycle, and carbon dioxide from the air to make food and energy to help it grow. During photosynthesis, plants make oxygen, and that is what animals and people need to breathe. Just take a deep breath and you breathe in a lot of oxygen. Oxygen, oxygen doesn't have any taste, but it's always there. We can't live without it. If the sun wasn't helping out with photosynthesis, we wouldn't have oxygen. You're welcome. The sun is pretty great. It's always around keeping the whole solar system together. It gives us light and keeps us warm. It helps bring us rain and grow plants to produce the oxygen we breathe. Such a big part of our lives that we wouldn't be able to... That we, that we would, it's such a big part of our lives that we wouldn't be able to live without it. The sun works really hard to help us out. That's kind of a big deal. Did you know that people used to think that the earth, the sun went around the earth? In fact, a long, long time ago, people thought that the whole universe, including the sun, moon, and the stars, all moved around earth. This idea is called geocentric model of the universe, and it's, well, wrong. An ancient astronomer named Ptolemy, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, is known for spreading this idea around. It took astronomers many years of watching the way stars and planets move before realizing that the sun is actually the center of the solar system. An astronomer named Copernicus is famous for making the discovery popular. It is called the heliocentric model of the universe and is what scientists still follow today. Did you know that some civilizations used to worship the sun? Some ancient civilizations believed that the sun was a really big deal before they even fully understood it. Some Egyptian, Indo-European, and Mesoamericans believed that the sun was their ruler, giving them light, wisdom, and justice. People didn't know the scientific explanations for why certain things happened, but they knew that the sun was a big part of it. They came up with all kinds of interesting stories about how things worked back then. For example, the ancient Greeks believed that the god Helios would pull the sun across the sky in a chariot every morning. This is different, but I'm not complaining. Did you know that people used to use the sun to tell time? Yep, that's right. For a long time, ancient people used all kinds of devices like candles and hourglasses to estimate time. Then the Egyptians started using the object we call a sundial around 1300 BCE. That's almost 3,500 years ago. Here's how it worked. Because the sun's position changes throughout the day, the pointer would cast a shadow on an area of the face or dial depending on where the sun was in the sky. This shadow told you what time it was. The sundial was pretty cool because it allowed people to break the day into different sections, kind of like we do with hours, but sundials weren't nearly as good as clocks. For instance, a sundial was useless at night because, well, there was no sunlight. Nowadays we use clocks and phones to tell time but people can still estimate the time of day by looking at where the sun is in the sky. For example, if the sun looks like it's almost right above you, it's around noon or lunchtime. It's especially helpful if you're spending time in nature without a watch. And it gives you a little model of how the sundial works. Did you know people used to prove that, that the earth is round? A very long time ago, before... We had cars and airplanes and skateboards. It was really hard for people to travel long distances. Since everyone was stuck pretty close to home, they didn't have a lot of information about Earth. Maybe that's because the Earth kind of looks flat from the ground or because when you look far off into the horizon, the land seems to drop off. But people all over the world believed that Earth was flat. It wasn't until about 2000. 500 years ago, that a mathematician named Pythagoras, I'm probably not pronouncing that either, argued that Earth and the Moon were actually round. Not too much later, Aristotle, a philosopher, gave everyone real evidence to back up Pythagoras' 
theory. Aristotle noticed that when a ship's hull disappeared first when it sailed over the horizon and that Earth's cast of a round shadow, not a flattened one, on the moon during a lunar eclipse. Over the years, the evidence kept piling up and we were able to determine that the Earth, along with all the other planets and stars, is in fact round. There's a bunch of other stuff in this book, um, but <laughs> this has been a really long video, um, and if you want to read up that stuff, I will leave screenshots and you can pause the video, um, but yeah, the end.